So now what we're going to talk about is tethigrams, basically how to get them and how to work out what cumulus cloud bases are likely to be and the cumulus cloud tops are likely to be. We're going to cover a number of uh, topics. One of them, very briefly, what's the difference between getting soaring weather and getting aviation weather for a pilot? The RASP site itself uh, we will look at um, and I'll show you how to get a custom sounding and also I'll describe the sounding to you so that it makes some sense. Finally, we'll work out the altitude of cumulus cloud bases and cloud tops. So the weather, um, we need to know whether the weather is going to be safe to fly. And that's what the authorities are really most interested in when they're issuing you your license. And so understandably, your license studies include being able to, to obtain the weather and being able to interpret it from a pilot's point of view. However, for you as a soaring pilot or potential soaring pilot, you really need to know as well, is it going to be soarable? Is it, in this case, is it going to be thermic? And for that reason, we have uh, introduced into this set of studies the RASP site. And we'll take you to that now so that you can begin to understand what these strange looking graphs are all about. All right, so let's just take a little walk around the RASP website and uh, I'll show you the parts that are relevant to this tutorial. Up the top here in the menu bar, if you can see where my cursor is moving backwards and forwards, we have raspstratus.org.uk um, that URL there is the URL that you need, uh, which you can get a link in this lesson. We've naturally fallen to the home page. And if we look in this section here, so part way down, you can see the, uh, the menu. And I'll show you a couple of things here. The first is the RASP table desktop. So if I click on the RASP data table desktop, we'll get this image. Now I just scroll down so you can see it properly on the screen. And this happens to be the um, boundary layer average wind, which is this marked here, which uh, is not of any particular interest for us for this particular exercise. If I click on this icon here, you can see a drop down menu and, and we will go to thermal updraft velocity. So I click on there. Across the top now you can see we've got the day, so the 26th of June, 1300 hours thermal updraft um, velocity. And if I just scroll down so you can see the picture more clearly, I you can see that I can um, actually sharpen it up a bit. You've got a coloured image with um, uh, the UK in the background. Yellow is good, basically. Uh, red is even better and blue is not very good. And this is from a thermal perspective. So you've got a scale across the top uh, showing you the uh, feet per minute that air uh, will be moving vertically upwards when it is moving vertically upwards, of course. So um, you can also see London here picked out. That's the very red bit. And of course, as you might expect, a very good thermal source. Shame is we've got uh, controlled airspace around it, so we can't actually use it, but never mind. You can see here in the northeast of England, the very blue area there, that's not going to be particularly good 
for um, for soaring. In fact, it would be very poor. Um, and this band down here at the bottom uh, looks like quite a large area of, of, of pretty reasonable soaring conditions. So, so uh, we can also click on this and get it to advance um, uh, hour by hour. So it's just advanced there. Um, so that's uh, 1400 and so on. It's a little bit slow. And that's my computer, not the RASP forecast, I expect. So if I go back now um, to the uh, home page again, um, and I will go to custom soundings here. So you see along the top, we've got soundings and custom soundings. Um, this, the point of this is to show you uh, the soundings and also show you how you can use that sounding to determine uh, cloud base or likely cloud bases uh, and cloud tops. So clicking on it, it will come to life in the end. There she goes. Uh, and I get the custom soundings page. And across this section here, I'm now offered a selection. The location here is the BGA or British Gliding Association trigraph uh, or turp turn point list. So every turn point in the UK has got a code. Um, uh, the one it's defaulted to there is AB1, which is the Boeing. Uh, if I click on it, I can scroll down and I'm going to select Talgarth, ST, oh, there we are, Talgarth, um, which I happen to know is Tal, T A L. Um, most of the turn points are fairly uh, uh, clearly coded, but not all of them are obvious, um, and you'll need to find out what your, the code is for your own airfield. If I click on that, I've now selected Talgarth, Saturday the 26th of June at 1.30, and I can click on the get the turn point results, and it'll take a moment, but it will arrive, there it is, and now I have a forecast sounding for uh, uh, Talgarth. In a moment or two, I'll explain uh, roughly how to read this. Um, but for now, uh, the left-hand uh, axis here is pressure, or you can read that as altitude. The diagonal lines here, so are the temperature lines so it's pressure temperature uh, and the two traces marked on it one in blue and one in red the red one is the actual air temperature or the predicted i beg your pardon air temperature as we go up through the atmosphere and the blue line is the predicted dew point at that level so um, that'll do for now, and, and uh, we'll get into the meat of how to uh, determine cloud base and cloud tops. We'll now look at the tephigrams that we can get on the RASP site. And for this example, I've used Talgarth, and you can see the date on the top of this one, uh, Talgarth valid at 1430 British Standard Time on Saturday the 26th of June 2021. And you won't be the first to ever look at a weather forecast or prediction and be looking at the wrong one. So some advice from me, just check the date before you go too much further. I'll now just take you through what the graph all means. On the left hand side here, you can see highlighted pressure. So, and the pressure is on the left hand side, it's basically a logarithmic scale. And it can be translated into height for you on the right hand side. But I use the word height advisedly because in aviation, height and altitude are two distinct things 
Uh, height is normally above a feature and altitude is above sea level. This uh, sounding is showing us altitude, so it's above sea level. But of course it's written by MET people who aren't necessarily aviators, so the words are used rather more generically. To put you, give you some sort of scale, 30,000 foot is marked here, which is about 300 hectopascals. Fairly easy number to remember. And 10,000 feet is marked here. And you can see that for the most part, we will use the, uh, the area at the bottom of the chart from um, up to say 700 hectopascals, not generally much higher for thermaline. Now taking a look at the horizontal axis, we can see across the bottom here, temperatures in degrees Celsius. And uh, the zero line is marked here, and you can see it's at an angle. So the, the chart is actually called a skew t phigram, so a logarithmic skew t phigram. Um, and it's skewed because the temperatures are skewed roughly at 45 degrees. The 20 degree line is shown here, and the minus 20 degree line is shown here. And, and the lines look confusing, but of course they're there to help you um, uh, interpret without doing lots of complicated maths. Now we'll look at the environmental line, so the red line and the blue line. And the red line is the predicted environmental temperature in degrees Celsius. And you can see, one, it's not a straight line, and uh, secondly, uh, and so it's not constant, that's the uh, important thing. It gets cooler generally as we go up, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it, for periods of time, it can get warmer as we go up through the atmosphere. I and mean, then that is called a, a inversion. And we can sometimes also have what uh, is a constant temperature as we're going up. So. Uh, looking at the predicted dew point temperatures in degrees Celsius, you can see as well that that changes rather dramatically as we go up through the atmosphere. And the reason for this is that the amount of water in the air is highly variable and it depends at what level you are. So for our prediction of thermals, we'll be looking at what's happening at the surface. And if we look here, we can see the predicted temperature at the surface, so the temperature of the air close to the surface is, let's say, about 17 degrees, according to me on that chart. And the predicted dew point of that particular mass of air near the surface is, let's say, 11 degrees, so a six degree difference between the dew point and the ambient air temperature. If I move in more closely um, so we can see it better, um, I'll show you the water content lines, and that's these green dotted lines running up. Um, and they show us the amount of water in that particular mass of air. So, and they're important when we're trying to determine cloud bases. Also, we have on the chart the dry adiabatic lapse rate lines. And they are lines which are approximately 3 degrees centigrade for every 1,000 feet we go up uh, uh, through the atmosphere. And they're a constant, they're a physical constant. And if air rises, uh, it will expand in the lower pressure. And because it expands, it will cool. And it will cool at that rate until it saturates. So the saturated adiabatic lapse rate lines are shown here. They're the green ones. And once the air has saturated, the air's temperature as it rises 
because and and expands it will cool at those rates very roughly one and a half degrees c per thousand feet now let's have a look at how we can use the graph itself and the first thing we'll do is plot a line from the bottom of the dew point line and parallel to the water content lines that's our first task the second thing to do will be to plot a point on the chart and I'm going to uh, just be a little rough and ready here and we'll make an assumption that the air at the surface has been heated on a, around a particular hot spot, the thermal source, uh, uh, to four degrees warmer than its surroundings. And because it's warmer than its surroundings, it will want to rise. And as it rises, it will expand. And because it's expanding, it will cool and it will follow the temperature line parallel to the dry adiabatic lapse rate line there so if we plot that line we can see that the two uh, those two lines we've now plotted have crossed over um, and that point there is um, you can see that the air is still warmer than its surrounding so the air temperature there is uh, let's say about eight degrees uh, uh, for the bubble and let's say five degrees for the uh, environmental air so the air around it so it's still more buoyant it still wants to go up um, and the this intersection point as well is where the air has now got visible vapor and visible vapor it depends where you are and who you are if you're a walker you'll probably call it fog and if you're a pilot you'll probably call it cloud so but nonetheless it's water vapor and that's all cloud is and the cloud base is marked here um, so it's the point of the intersect between those two lines and it's roughly 5,000 feet so having done that we can now work out what this parcel air is going to do from that point forward and it's going to rise and cool at the saturated adiabatic lapse rate and then that will continue to happen and the parcel will continue to rise until it is at the same temperature as its surroundings and in my example here you can see it it hasn't reached that point so the cloud will just keep developing vertically and with with high vertical development like this we can quite reasonably expect to see some heavy rain showers if not thunderstorms okay so that's the uh, first little uh, visit to tefigrams i hope that's starting to make some sense and i'll see you next time bye for now